Welcome to our lecture online. We're now ready to summarize the relationship between the phase and the line currents and the phase and the line voltages for a wide delta circuit. So remember that the line currents are IA, IB, and IC on the lines from the source to the load. The phase currents are the currents through the three load impedances from I to B, from A to B, from B to C, and from C back to A. For voltages, the line voltage is the voltage that is across from A to B, which is also the voltage that's across from A to B here at the source. So V small AB is the same as large AB. And the phase voltage is the voltage between A and N, B and N, and C and N. And we need to realize that there's a difference between the magnitudes of the line currents and the phase currents and the line voltages and the phase currents and there's a difference between the angle, the phase angle, between the line currents and the phase currents and the line voltages and the phase voltages. So here we have a graphical representation of those differences. You can see here that the line voltage is greater or larger in magnitude than the phase voltage. The difference is the square root of 3. And we can also see that there's a difference in the phase angle, that the line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees. When we deal with the currents, we can see that the line current is larger than the phase current, again by a factor of the square root of 3. And we can see that the line current lags the phase current by 30 degrees. So this is a handy diagram to try and memorize. You can see that the representation of the line voltage is the voltage from A to B. Oop, I kind of destroyed my little A right here, A to B. And it's also the voltage between A and B here at the load. The phase voltage can be found by taking the voltage from A to N, from B to N, or from C to N, but we're just, just kind of using A and B here as a representation. The line currents, remember the line current IA is a current from the source to the load. The phase currents are the currents inside the load across the three impedances. Now, what we want to do here is show the difference that the line voltage is the square root of 3 times the phase voltage with a positive phase angle difference of 30 degrees. For example, the voltage from A to B is equal to the square root of 3 times the voltage between A and N and an added phase angle of 30 degrees. So whatever the phase angle is for VAN, we add 30 degrees to that to get the phase angle for VAB. And for the currents, we can see that the line current IA is equal to the square root of 3 times the magnitude of the phase current with a, fa with a phase angle difference of minus 30 degrees. So in other words, a lag of 30 degrees. So we know that the line current is larger by a factor of the square root of 3 than the phase current, but it lags by 30 degrees. For example, IA is equal to the square root of 3 times the magnitude, IAB, but we subtract 30 degrees from the phase angle. And another nice reference is that the phase current, IAB, for example, will be equal to the voltage from A to B, which is the line voltage, AB, divided by the impedance, the load impedance, which is the same of all three impedances if the load is going to be balanced. So it's the same as taking the voltage between AB here and dividing that by the impedance of the load. So if you can memorize this, you pretty well know how to solve three-phase circuits, especially the wide delta circuit. And that is how it's done.